Hey guys. So these are pinhole glasses from my talk with David Hestrian. If you guys want to check it out, these are not sunglasses. Anyways, I want to talk today about a memory from, it's probably the first three weeks or so after I went back to China from Chicago. A lot of you really enjoyed my stories about going back to China, being that American kid in China. So I thought I'd tell some more stories about that. We had a family friend and she had a daughter. So I was seven at the time and just maybe four or five, I think just five. We were visiting them, they were talking, and so we were watching this television program. Of course, it's a television program making the Taiwanese look stupid. The little girl starts explaining to me what the KMT is, who the communists are, blah, blah, blah. And I'm asking her questions, I'm giving my thoughts. And every time I start saying something, she starts interrupting me. And second time, or third time, she just goes, listen to me, I know better. And automatically, I just go. And then, again, we're talking later, and then she interrupts me again. And I just go. And by the third time, I go. And she goes, she just gives a laugh, like she knows she messed up. She's like, okay, um, I'm sorry, I'll stop interrupting you. So the lesson to this is not, when people interrupt you, you go like this. Okay, I hope you realize that. The lesson to this is establish boundaries. Even as a little kid, in fact, as little kids, we know that the most. When we're hungry, okay, we need to be fed. When we're this, we know that. It's just as we get socialized, as we develop our own personalities, sometimes we lose track of the fundamentals, which is that you have to establish your boundaries. And as a kid, I'm seven. I don't understand how to explain things to a five-year-old. But even if you knew how to be assertive as a seven-year-old and you explain to a five-year-old, look, if you interrupt me, maybe what you were about to say or you about to ask, I was about to say because, again, I didn't finish my thought. But, again, a five-year-old probably doesn't understand that. So the best thing is just to tell her, look, if you keep interrupting me, I'm just not going to listen. But as a kid, I understood boundaries. I understood I don't want to get interrupted. Just like you don't want to get interrupted. I'm not going to interrupt you. When you talk, so don't interrupt me when I talk, right? So as a kid, I knew that. And the best way for me as a seven-year-old to show that I don't want to get interrupted is to, when they interrupt you, don't listen to them either. But there's another deeper lesson to this. And this goes back to why I keep making these videos about thinking about your childhood and finding inspiration from your childhood. It's that we all have personalities. We're all a certain type of person. If you want to know how to improve yourself in a direction that doesn't feel fake, you better figure out how you were as a kid because that's as pure as you were to yourself. You figure out, all right, how do I get myself back to then? Of course, you don't want the bad habits, but the good habits, that's something from your childhood self that you should get back. So what's the lesson? What's the ultimate goal? Besides the fact that finding inspiration from yourself and how you were and how you could get back some of those good qualities that maybe you've lost all these years, whether through stressful school or parenting or life or work, etc. The point is, there's such a big self-help, self-improvement industry. Why is there so many books, so many people teaching it? It's because if one person had the right answer and it could be applied to everyone, then that person would sell all the books. But the problem is people are so different. That's why one person's advice may be gold to one person, but it's crap to another person. If you want to improve yourself and you think finding an external source as in a guide or a book or a mentor is the right way, you have to figure out if that person matches your fundamental behaviors and personality types from how you were as a kid. Because if you try to go in a direction not authentic to how you were as a kid, you'll feel fake or you'll feel you're not making the most progress because you're trying to become someone you weren't. And the way to figure it out is who, whether it's a book or a mentor or a personality, gives you this deep feeling. It's like, holy crap, I feel like this person talks to me. I think that's a good place to start. Because when I'm thinking about these memories, personally, these memories of as a seven-year-old telling people not to interrupt me, I get this feeling inside. When you see someone, maybe someone who you aspire to be or someone you think is cool, whether on YouTube or a celebrity or a book or whatever, and you see them act or you see them give advice, it talks to you in here. 
Maybe that person has a little bit of who you fundamentally were as a kid. One, you have to love yourself first. And two, you have to find yourself first. You don't want to find yourself through other people. You find yourself through your memories. You find yourself through figuring out who you were before shit happened, basically. And also, this is another warning. Don't pick up bad qualities from your childhood. Figure out which qualities were effective and which qualities helped you that you should get back. And then you get more of that. I hope this helps, guys. If you want to hear me tell more of these stories, I will. I will talk to you guys very soon. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.